Um, could I begin by uh, welcoming the uh, National Council for Special Education and indeed the Department and uh, appreciate your presence here today. Um, could I at the outset raise an issue that um, has been raised with me in my own constituency of Kerry by principals, um, parents, and it's an issue concerning the allocation of SNAs. And uh, could I say initially as well that um, I would welcome very much so um, the rollover of um, SNA allocation and um, SET allocation. I think that was a, you know, a rollover from uh, last year to this year. I, I think that's very positive and very progressive. But notwithstanding that, schools by their nature, um, you know, their needs change year on year. So, uh, for example, I, I, I could give a number of examples, but I was uh, one in particular that stands out. Um, a school um, following their uh, notification of allocation would have uh, received application from four students um, who have additional needs and therefore they would require um, further um, SNA support obviously. But they have been told that um, that um, opportunity to, to give SNA support will actually have to be reviewed in the autumn. So could I ask you just initially, um, what exactly does that mean when we say a decision uh, in terms of an allocation of an SNA will be uh, reviewed in the autumn, when, what time scale are we talking about there? Okay, um, well, actually, at the moment, we've received 950 uh, re applications for an exceptional review. So schools, just like the one that you mentioned, who uh, have experienced a, a, an increase in the number of students that they, um, with, with additional needs and additional care needs, and they feel that the current allocation is, is insufficient. Mm -hmm. So we've, as I said, we have received 950 um, applications and it is open to the school to, to make that application now. Um, so I'm just a little bit confused. As to no, I, I'm just asking, yes, and the application is made, but I'm, I'm just wondering what is the time frame for them, for the decision to be made so that they're informed of where they stand? Well, in relation to um, the current 950 applications, we're hoping to have a decision out next week. Um, and then we'll be taking other applications and dealing with turning them around as quickly as, as we can over the summer period. So there is no question of an application being reviewed in autumn? That was what I was told, that it would be reviewed again in the autumn? Uh, no, we're doing it on an ongoing basis, so there might have just been a bit of um, uh, miscommunication. Oh, okay, I, I would welcome that. Um, I, I think the sooner it can be done, um, the better. Saying that what we did say was that we had indicated that um, applications that we had received by a certain date we would have turned around by next Monday, and maybe people are confusing the two things. Okay, can I ask you, um, is there consideration being given to, um, given the very new, I suppose, experience of school we will have uh, in August and September when children return, uh, given whole COVID 19 stay safe measures and all of that? Um, are you looking favourably even at appointing um, additional, we'll say, SNAs, even on a temporary basis, um, you know, to accommodate you know, children with additional needs and also, I suppose, the, the greater needs that will arise in the school because of the conditions in which we'll, schools, we would assume, will be operating um, going forward? Uh, at the moment, we're allocating in line with the, with the department's policy. So the department hasn't indicated to us that they want us to take a different approach. Um, if uh, the department indicates that they want us to take a different approach or have a different uh, range of criteria to allocate or to use for allocation purposes, then that's something that we could use. Okay, perhaps I could put that question to, to Mr. Tatton. Um, again, just to repeat it, bearing in mind that there will be, um, you know, additional needs within a school. And for example, I would be very familiar with schools where would say where there could be uh, classrooms with mainstream classrooms with 30 students and um, obviously there would be students with additional needs within that classroom setting and so bearing that in mind and on top of that the the new measures that will have to be in place um, to deal with whole COVID-19 stay safe and all of that um, would you be looking at the um, opportunity to even on a temporary basis provide additional SNAs in the school environment? It's something we, we, we would have to consider. Uh, I think, Deputy, the, uh, as I was saying, I think a little bit earlier, the, the, uh, the public health guidance is effectively going to inform where, where, where we are, and that will be based on the experience as we move through the summer. But in, we know that there may need to be changes in how both SNAs and, and, and uh, special education teachers work uh, with their students. 
because of physical distancing reasons, because of restrictions, because of, of heightened concerns, and some of the children we're talking about would have significant medical conditions as well. So we have to take cognizance of all of that, but I think until such time as we have that, we're not going to know for certain how, how we go about that, but, but something that we can keep under review. Okay, thank you. I, I welcome that. Could I raise with you, and I appreciate previous speakers have raised the issue of the summer programme, July provision as it was, was the, the summer programme, um, and, and just a, a little bit of clarity around it really. Um, this morning we heard from Inclusion Ireland who, who told us of a survey that they had uh, conducted amongst parents um, of children with additional needs and uh, parents very clearly um, would have said, 89% of them in fact, would have said that um, their students, their children missed school and 78% of them said really that homeschooling really did not operate or work well for them. So one would anticipate that there would be a huge uptake um, for this summer programme scheme. And indeed, I appreciate that the Minister did forecast that as well when he you know, uh, suggested that there would be anything between 20 and 24,000 students you know, might, might take the opportunity. And last year there were 10,000 students. And yet this year we're looking at maybe a figure around maybe 14,000. Um, what would be your understanding as to why there has been such um, a divergence of, of the figure that was projected of 20 to 24,000 and uh, an uptake of 14,000, bearing in mind that the parents are really crying out for an opportunity um, for, for students to attend such programmes? There, there could be a few reasons for that. I suppose to clarify the figure, the, 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 kind of the 20 to 24,000 figure is an eligibility figure. In other words, these, this is the potential universe of children who could benefit from, from the, the, the scheme as we've constructed it. In a typical year, when you know, July provision up until this year has only applied to children with autism and those with severe and profound uh, intellectual disabilities, you would have been looking at about maybe a 15,000 cohort and about 10 or 10,500, so about two thirds of people typically taking it up. So the figures we have about 14,000 is not far off that. Uh, obviously, as you say, you would expect this year for there to be, be, be potentially more. But that said, you will have others who, and I'm sure there are parents, and talking to, to, to parents that, that I know and others who contact the, school, the, the, the department, they would have concerns too for their children, concerns that you know, should, should they go back now, is it safer for them to wait to see how things progress for, for Ireland uh, you know, on the COVID-19 issue through the summer and wait until the autumn? If they, if they have put up with it for this length of time and the schools being closed is, is far from ideal, uh, are they prepared to, to maybe wait a bit further and just to see? And some, I think, will have, uh, have made that decision out of, out of a kind of an abundance of caution. Could I put it to you that um, it certainly didn't help the situation that there was considerable and remains considerable confusion around the eligibility of students with Down syndrome um, to, to um, participate in programmes like this in particular. Um, could you clarify once and for all really that irrespective of the announcement on the 5th of June, which was hugely um, endorsed and, and certainly welcomed, um, that it now appears that children with Down syndrome who attend a mainstream second level school are not eligible to participate. Is that the case as it stands presently? Um, so to explain, they're not formally included within the scope of the scheme and that's for the reasons that I've said where we focused on those with the most complex needs and at the greatest risk of, of, of significant regression. S sorry to interrupt you now, but there, there was an impression given originally that they were included. W would that be correct? I, I, I can not speak to that, but I can say that in, in the government decision that was made and the announcement that was made on foot of that on the 12th, uh, on the, on, on, sorry, last Friday week, mm -hmm. uh, it was clear that the category was, was primary only. But, but I want to just, just say something further than that, if, if, if you permit. Um, we have had and continue to have engagement with Down Syndrome Ireland on this issue and uh, we believe that there are arrangements, there are, were arrangements in place last year through a different scheme through which Down Syndrome children of post-primary age could benefit uh, in summer for summer activity and that was funded through the department and we're seeking to have something similar in place so we have certainly no intention of taking away something that was available last year. 
I appreciate that, but that is not the scheme as was originally outlined, we'll say, on the 5th of June, and that was not the scheme that had the basis of inclusion, which was broadly welcomed on the 5th of June. And I think that's very, very disappointing. I'm very conscious of my time. One last question, if I could, um, we're very aware, even at this stage, that there will be medically fragile students not in a position to attend um, when schools open in August and September. What planning is underway? Because we, irrespective of the public health advice and all that, we know at this stage there will be many categories of students there. What planning is in place to cater for students? Like that. There is a, there's a group within the department uh, planning for a continuity of teaching and learning who will be looking at this and uh, considering it again informed by the, the public health advice but we, we know we're going to need contingency uh, arrangements in place for the autumn for children who uh, parents will just simply not be happy to have them back uh, regardless of, of, of what arrangements are in place around the public health considerations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.